Hi guys, how are you? I'm back out here on the trail as I am daily. Beautiful day, beautiful day. I mean, the weather, the weather has really, really broken. It's a nice, I don't think about 77 degrees. Perfect for a walk, you guys. This is the channel that checks the boxes for you. Uh, we are out here daily. We are walking, we are encouraging one another. And I really can't believe all the amazing positive things happening that I'm hearing. I myself, without even trying, I'm telling you these daily walks, I have messed around <laughs> and I've dropped 12 pounds effortless, effortlessly. Um, it just, it wasn't a goal per se, but I'll take it. I'm feeling uh, fabulous, refreshed. The walks pay you back, guys. The walks pay you back. I'm encouraging you, get your gym shoes on. Uh, come on out here daily. Uh, the channel is worth it. You're worth it. I'm worth it. We're just up leveling and we're doing it naturally. That's the beautiful part. So let's go ahead and jump into the content. Uh, the title of today's program is Passive Aggressive Moves. Passive Aggressive Moves, how to negotiate them. If you haven't checked out part one, go on back, review part one. Uh, this is part two. Uh, this particular uh, topic is going to be a series because people have requested more information about dealing with passive aggressive people um, I have to tell you people will engage passive aggressive behavior for for a variety of different reasons uh, when I decided to start my channel several years ago I made a commitment to myself to just keep it real because to me what what's the point <laughs> at this juncture if you're not gonna keep it real you know I myself uh, there was a time that I did engage in some passive-aggressive moves and I'll tell you why I'll tell you guys why I, I just didn't know how <laughs> be quite honest with you it's not always a, a fancy answer <laughs> I really did not know how um, to successfully engage in, in direct communication I did not have uh, that model growing up but I will tell you what I have witnessed um, just in the many years of growth, development, you know, meeting people, my practice, my work. You guys, communication, communication is so very powerful. There are relationships, uh, jobs, work teams, marriages, so many could have been saved. You know, people will you know, cut people off, trash relationships could look totally different, totally different um, with communication. I am a firm believer that everything is a muscle. Everything is a muscle. That which we do not know how to do, we roll up our sleeves and we start working that muscle. And the beauty is it gets easier and easier over time. So, you know, p passive aggressive behavior, uh, in my estimation, people have different definitions, but the people who engage in passive aggressive behavior, um, layers of reasons. Sometimes it has a lot to do with emotional uh, immaturity. Sometimes it has to do with a lack of just confidence, com uh, confidence in the area of communication and then I've also had people say to me I just you know I don't necessarily want to hurt people so it comes out sideways and that's what passive aggressive behavior is it's I'm gonna passively deal with my resentment and punish you because I don't know how to positively and actively communicate with you in such a way that I'm going to get results <laughs> as well as respect the relationship dynamic. So I want to go a little bit further into this because 
not only does this channel, I check a lot of practical boxes in terms of health and wellness, but I also want to be giving you guys information, uh, practical information that you can use. I really refer to it as, uh, you know, the, a plug and play channel. So I want to give you a method, a methodology on how to work with people who are passive aggressive. And then I also have some very specific advice um, if you are personally struggling uh, with passive aggressive tendencies and behaviors, you know this is true inside of yourself and you want to change. That's another reason why I love the channel. It's safe space. You can do a lot of personal analysis with no one in your business and just plug in the information. So share a little story with you. Um, recently dealt with a passive aggressive move uh, by someone I know. I had agreed uh, to do a favor for this person, but as often happens, uh, life, life got in the way and I was not able uh, to, to fulfill that commitment. I called, I apologized, and I was on the phone, it seemed like everything was fine. Okay, you know, I understand, Sheila, no problem. And as you know, that's another tendency that goes with the passive aggressive personality is not being truly honest um, about how you're feeling because on the phone, I felt like everything was okay, uh, but clearly, clearly it was not. I noticed um, at an event a few weeks later, this individual was kind of chilly toward me. I had reached out uh, with a few phone calls and it wasn't a casual message I left. It was really something um, because of something that's being worked on. It really did require an answer and a specific answer. And I did not hear back. And so, you know, putting one and one together, I figured, okay, we've got a problem here. This is really feeling like a passive aggressive move. I will reference uh, the psychological term Occam's razor, which basically states the most logical uh, reason <laughs> something has happened. That, that, that's usually one you want to zero in on. So one of the things about confronting someone who is passive aggressive, uh, nine times out of 10, they're not going to double back to either heal the situation or express their resentment or their hurt. And that's really the, the core of what passive aggressive is, is holding on to stuff and allowing that resentment and hurt to come out sideways. So it's really up to the person who has developed that muscle a bit more, um, who has developed that skill set within him or herself a bit more um, to come to the table. And I feel that generally it's worth it because I'll tell you guys, people, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're a bad person if you don't have every aspect of healthy communication figured out. There's some really, you know, truly awesome people. Uh, they just don't have this muscle in use. So it presents a really nice opportunity in relationships uh, for, for some rich learning and for some rich healing. So I'm just encouraging you um, not to write people off so quickly because they, they don't have all the elements of communication figured out. So what I did, um, because I have worked this muscle, and the thing about working that muscle, it just gives you a lot more capacity in your relationships. So I did text her and I said, look, um, I know we have this event coming up. Can you stay just a few minutes later? It's, it's important. I just want to run something past you. And she said yes. And I know we live in this age of phone texting, but I really prefer this, these conversations face to face if possible. It's not always possible. And then certainly a phone call or Zoom, something like that would be very appropriate. And so I want to share with you the exact technique, the exact technique <laughs> that I've used with her, that I've used with many people. 
and you guys keeping it real <laughs> this is exactly some years ago what a dear friend this is what they used with me I don't think they realized they were using a technique but it was um, really powerful and the first thing that you want to do with someone who is passive-aggressive number one is you spotlight you spotlight with compassion you spotlight the issue that is going on and how you're feeling with compassion and I'll tell you more about the compassion in a minute number two number two you model you take a moment to model direct communication and the modeling is very powerful and then number three you receive the positive energy shift and I'll say a little bit more about that in just a second so the conversation I had with her went something like this you know um, <laughs> the last few weeks I reached out I, I haven't heard back from you I think that I may have done something to offend you. I'm gonna stop there for a second. The reason why I don't go in with, have I done something to offend you, is because someone who hasn't worked this muscle of direct communication, there may be aspects of emotional immaturity in there. That question in and of itself could be a trigger. They could experience a direct question like that as a form of co confrontation that they're not ready to face a conversation that ready to have so I just go in and I spotlight with compassion say I I think I may have done something to offend you and I know that you're you're very much like me in your heart in your heart of hearts <laughs> you're a direct communic you're a direct communicator too so if the shoe is on the other foot I know you do the same thing now the reason I do that, I use specific language. I know you're like me, in your heart, you're a direct communicator. Maybe they're not really a direct communicator, but I said the word heart, because inside of themselves, they want to be, they are, they just haven't worked the muscle. And when you just kind of throw yourself in there alongside of them, you're like me. What that does is it de-escalates tension. You know, you're like me. You would do the same thing if you were in my shoes. So I've seen that language. It's very powerful and it's very calming. And so I continue on. You know, I know you do the same thing. And I, I really <laughs> want to just check in with you and j just talk about it. And that's how I open it up. Just want to talk about it. And in this particular instance, I think she was um, so disarmed because there was such a level of just compassion. She did open up <laughs> and admit that she was very disappointed <laughs> that um, I could not deliver on that favor because of an emergency. And just, and when people start opening up, even if you feel, because I have to be honest, <laughs> inside of myself I felt like wow <laughs> are you kidding you know this was a real emergency <laughs> your the situation was not an emergency on your end this is what I felt internally um, it's normal <laughs> but I've trained myself to just breathe stay calm I heard her out I really tried to put myself um, in her shoes I listened to her you don't have to agree you don't have to agree, you guys, to listen to someone um, in a solid, respectful way. And listening does not involve defending yourself. Listening, listening really involves listening and, le and leaning in. So I heard her out. Um, we talked it through. Certainly got a couple things off my chest. Um, it was a it was a positive exchange and I will tell you that although this person is not a super they're not a super close friend but having sat rationally and reasonably walk through that work through that it 
lays the foundation for a, a strong friendship. So that relationship is stronger because we were able to sit and work through it. And, and this is the case across the board, whether it's a professional relationship or a personal relationship, when you are able to stop, sit, and work through, it creates a stronger relationship, bond, and, and foundation. You know, think about it. It makes sense. It's, wow, something that was emotional, hurtful. We sat, we watched ourselves work through it together. So it can't do anything but strengthen a relationship. And people run away from conflict, uh, you know, turn to passive aggressive behavior. But conflict and problems can be such a tool for strengthening uh, any relationship. So I, I really want you to get into that mindset. Now, having said that, a bit of a spoiler alert, I do have to tell you that at times you will deal with a person who is so, they're compromised, they haven't worked this muscle, the maturity just isn't there. Guys, sometimes the maturity uh, is not there and just your ability to come to them in compassion that can be a trigger that can be a trigger in and of itself so I don't want you to be disappointed um, if the conversation doesn't go well and that's why step number three is so important is to receive receive the positive energy shift receiving the positive energy shift has nothing to do with their disposition. It has nothing to do with their reaction to the conversation. You receive the positive energy shift internally, and I'll tell you why and how. Because that's about you reflecting on your growth, reflecting on your growth and development, and allowing that to positively fuse into your journey moving forward. So in other words, it's you giving yourself a wonderful pat on the back. <laughs> a pat on the back emotionally, figuratively speaking. So in closing, uh, what I want to say is if you are a passive aggressive person, only you know, only you know the truth. It's just time to more or less have the come to Jesus moment. And just make the commitment. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. I'm really going to start communicating directly for my own good. You guys, there are health benefits to this. People who communicate directly, they're healthier because they're not sitting on resentment. They're not harboring resentment. They have a positive outlook on life because they have the confidence, guys, the confidence is there. They know if things come up, I can handle it. I can deal with it. So this is a muscle that is worthy. It is a muscle that is worthy of being worked and cultivated. Only positive things can come from it. Only positive things can come from it. And it's something you do for yourself first and foremost. It's not your problem if people are unreasonable or immature. That's their problem. Your problem is walking in, this, in the seat of truth. In the seat of truth. And it's so refreshing. It's absolutely refreshing for your life. So guys, I'm going to be back soon with part three of the series. But this is just some tips and suggestions on dealing with passive aggressive people. They're not always bad, guys. Sometimes it's just the muscle has not been worked, okay? So thanks a lot. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to fit in a few more miles and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.